Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for joining us today. We are very excited to welcome Lewitt Audio to the Sweetwater family. We've got Roman, the founder of the company, and Moritz, the COO and the technology, sort of the brand uh, product manager, right? Joining us right. here today, and uh, we're, we're so happy you guys are here. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And you've been in showing the microphones to the sales engineers and demonstrating some of the products. We've got some of them here. It's such cool microphones. Thank you. Thank you. We're really excited. Yeah, well, we are too. So tell us a little bit about how you got into microphones. What, what led you to start the company? Well, I always liked to build products. I always liked audio. As a teenager, I built my own PA speakers. Um, they sounded horrible, but uh, <laughs> for sure we would drag them around to various parents' places and basements and had parties there. I went on and studied electronics, and um, I worked at AKG for actually uh, five years. Okay. And I felt, and in fact, I, I already knew that not everything a microphone can do had been done yet. And I was really convinced there could be more extraordinary, more innovative audio products out there. And... What I did not know back then or did not realize, however, was that this corporate environment did not foster these dreams. And on top of that, things got worse. Um, I was in April 2007, I was driving in the inner city of Vienna looking for a parking lot. I decided to turn left and suddenly a train crashed into the side of my car. Oh, wow. I almost got killed. Wow. And when I woke up in the hospital, it, it really dawned on me and it became crystal clear in the end, actually, that I needed to change my life. I needed to make an impact. I really needed to follow my dreams. And in 2008, I founded Lewitt. Uh, wow. Forward-thinking, innovative company with the vision to help all creative minds to express themselves with exceptional sound. What, what stands out to me is the combination of, obviously, audio quality, but also the technologies and the forward-thinking electronics and designs and the industrial design of the microphones and everything. Tell us a little bit about where that came from and, and your vision for how the mics look and how they sound. It was very clear from the beginning that we need to uh, offer a real benefit for the users, right? We want to imp improve workflow, we want to improve the sound. And what we do find in our industry, there, there's this story that you need to look at, at vintage. Vintage, is, vintage microphones are, are the holy grail. And when you're a young um, studio engineer or aspiring studio engineer, it's very hard to obtain them and to maintain them. Sure. That never resonated with us because these these microphones back at their time, they were really cutting edge. The engineers back then set out to, to do the impossible, right? But that was 70 years ago in, in, in many of these cases. Right. So why would we do that? Imagine this applied to another industry, right? We would run around with rotary phones or watch <laughs> black and white TVs. So so to us, it, was, it, it didn't make any sense. So we really wanted to to make innovative products with today's cutting-edge technology. Sure. And you could have gone with the standard sort of tubular mic shapes and things, but these have a, a really brilliant shape to them and geometric aspect. Right. I think form factor is also very important. Um, you see it now in this situation. You want to have a camera-friendly design. Mm -hmm. um, we achieved that by having a quite small form factor. Uh, we thought about an integrated pop screen that is magnetically attachable. So that all helps with, with um, this feature. Right. You mentioned the corporate aspects that you wanted to move away from uh, before. Your company is set up to be, it seems, very employee-friendly and very musician and engineer-friendly as well. You've got different things that you brought together, both with the design and engineering in Vienna as well as the manufacturing in the Far East. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So... For us, we want to create really a, a space where um, we can be innovative and where cre creativity can strive and people can grow and where we don't swallow up ideas but rather um, hunt them down and develop them. Mm -hmm. So we nowadays are 100-plus um, employees, um, actually more than 25 nationalities. So wow. it's, it's really diverse. And many of our colleagues, they come from really different backgrounds. We have people, they are coming from measurement uh, or robotics background. Um, a lot of uh, musicians and sound engineers too. So having a diverse team, that, that is really important in order to foster innovation. And uh, we are yeah, engineering all our products uh, in Vienna. Um, we do everything in-house. So um, all of these parts are dedicated Lewitt parts. And 
we manufacture where uh, we find the best supply chain. And in fact, that is currently um, in the Far East, in China. Mm -hmm. But also there, we really make sure that we um, design our own production fixtures. We have our own measurement equipment. We have a dedicated Louis team there that takes care uh, of all the production steps. And that's how we achieve a really high standard and high quality. Also, automation is, is very important to us. And again, there's this myth out there of the, the skilled engineer sitting in a production line and uh, handcrafting your dedicated microphone. Well, if you, if you think a little bit about that, that is not actually what you want. In production, we really want to um, eliminate human error. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot about automation. And, um, yeah, having very lean and, and well-defined processes. Right, right. The mics are so consistent that basically any two are a stereo pair, correct? So, yeah, I mean, depends which model, mm -hmm. uh, of course. But we have something called uh, the perfect match technology. And that's another interesting aspect of how production can help also bring the price down and make also the quality better. Uh, so even in the analog microphones, like right now, we have the LCD 540S. And it has a small microcontroller inside. So during production, you obviously need to connect it via an XLR connection. And over that XLR connection, we modulate like a digital signals that can then measure the sensitivity of the microphone and automatically adjust the sensitivity of the capsule by, by changing the polarization voltage. That's very impressive. Yeah, and, <laughs> and the cool thing about it is that now we can match them throughout any production lot like a plus minus 0 0.5 dB accuracy of sensitivity, meaning you buy one now, you buy one in five years, you know, you can use them as a stereo pair. That's very impressive. The other thing that impressed me looking at the specs overall for the microphones is you achieve very low noise ratings for these microphones. Yeah, I mean, especially, again, the one we are using right now has uh, 3 or 4 dB, 4 dB, a, yeah. 4 dB a, a self noise, and it was actually really challenging to even measure that. Yeah. So we built, like, how many tons? I don't know. I think it was five tons, a concrete uh, yeah, place. structure yeah. where we put the microphone in because we wanted to measure the actual acoustical self-noise, like not just measure like the electronic system without the capsule, but in a, to, to get to the truth, really, right? The right. truth is the acoustical self-noise, what comes out uh, at the axial R connection. And yeah, it was quite fun and challenging. And yeah, uh, we, we managed to do that. Right. And it's actually, if you look at the curve of human hearing, how it goes over the frequency spectrum, mm -hmm. and you look at the self noise over the frequency spectrum of that mic, actually it's below human hearing. Wow. And I mean, you need a, a good room for that. But what it allows you to do is you can go further away or record some very silent stuff. And you can even compress things really heavily without the noise floor being then amplified with it. I mean, it's still amplified with it, but it's not audible still. And yeah, that's why I find a lot of people doing sample libraries and stuff like that use, use the 540S. Yeah, sure. Any type of delicate acoustic recording, yeah. classical instruments and those kinds of things are going to be ideal with a microphone like this. But you have such a range of microphones, handheld, dynamic, condenser, studio microphones. I mean, there really is a broad range of, of, of products there. Is there a Lewitt sound to your microphones? Yeah, I, I would say very clearly yes. Mm -hmm. um, although some microphones, like the 1040 here, can shape the sound, there's always the default, and we call it kind of record-ready sound. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind it is that everybody can get good results fast, and you don't need to tweak you know, a lot of processes afterwards. And you get the sound that you can immediately share with your friends, uh, and you kind of feel good about your recordings. And if you listen to it on the headphones, it sounds great. And it's just easy and fast to get good results. Right. When that inspiration hits, you can be making music instantly, which is exactly. such an important thing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, generally what we're trying to do is to make the technology go out of the way so that people can focus on their creativity, on their art, which is challenging in itself. So right. you don't need to worry about the gear also on top of it. Right. One of the other things that I, I really like about the approach that you guys take is that you're involving audio engineers and musicians very early in the design process, and that's a big part of achieving the sound that you want to get. It's really a necessity to do so, because developing a product is you know, a time-consuming thing, and you want to get it right as much as you can. And as far as we maybe did that in the past, uh, we're not anymore really working in a recording studio. 
like we are building microphones. Right. So we really need to be in touch with the engineers today who are working in this because the industry is changing quickly as is very obvious now in the last two years of especially. So yeah, we, we do that in a variety of ways. Uh, sometimes it's online sound surveys. Like for the 1040, we had 2,500 participants like in an ABX blind test to kind of verify the directions we were heading. Or it's more casual, like we visit some studios in Vienna or more elaborate where we to go on like studio tours mm -hmm. on different countries in US or, or also China or we send it to our partners in Korea or Japan uh, to kind of get that feedback. Right, right. You get additional feedback and also utility from the fact that you actually have a very sophisticated recording studio in your facility. Yeah, we do. That was a, a, a long wish to have that. Um, we started all, it, it was humble beginnings, so to say. <laughs> I think our first uh, production studio, that was actually in our early office space. It was it was the toilet. Uh, <laughs> so, so we, we uh, remodified it to a production room. It was a spacious toilet, though. It was a spacious <laughs> toilet, yes. Um, and there's a toilet recording on, on, on YouTube as well uh, with the 640TS where you can uh, nice. hear all the reverb. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, nowadays we have a, a dedicated production studio and it's really a custom space where we have custom acoustic uh, treatment. We even have a custom speaker system there. So everything we need and it's it's a beautiful space. We use it for, for various um, work, whether it be um, testing products or recording podcasts or shooting pictures. There's, there's a great video online of how you built the studio and the lengths you went to for the acoustic treatment to take it from being a 50 meters square empty room with a tremendous four second re reverb time, something like that, down to where it's you know more like a studio control room with 300 milliseconds and the, the lengths you went to for the custom treatment in there is very impressive. Yeah, there's a huge bass trap in there and lots of acoustic dampening. Right. Um, even so much that actually uh, um, not many speaker systems we found work in this environment. Um, so that was then the reason w and led us to, to have a custom speaker system for that room. Right. Right. So you also uh, are giving back and supporting emerging artists with your music challenges. And you've, you've been doing some recordings with uh, up and coming artists as well. Talk a little bit about that. So the music challenge is something we did now a couple of times. And the response is really incredible. So the concept in itself is we get a band and record a song with them. And we kind of document the whole process, uh, like wherever the mics play stuff. And then we put it online, the multi-tracks, so our audience can, can kind of download those tracks and mix them uh, or remix them. And yeah, upload them and then they are kind of get judged and you can you know, win microphones. And it's kind of a cool activity for the community. And we kind of adapted to the time. So uh, when kind of the whole pandemic started, we did kind of a home recording edition where all the members of the bands recorded their parts, you know, in their flat, in their home. Right. Uh, when it allowed, then we recorded in our studio. There was also one where it was in a Metropolis studio, actually a live concert in the studio that was there to be mixed. And yeah, they're still available on our website mm -hmm. to download. And what excites me the most, and I still can't believe uh, that it's actually true, like we had participants from 100 countries. Wow. I mean, that's crazy. That, that's crazy, yeah. Yeah, that, that's great, great. And, and really outstanding mixes, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Mixes and, and remixes and kind of completely new interpretations. It's, yeah, fantastic. And some fantastic. of them actually made even video yeah. uh, content uh, for, for their files. Nice. So. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, there's such a tremendous array of incredible microphones that, that Lewitt makes. We've got a selection of, well, as you mentioned, we're using the 540S here. We've got four other microphones here. Give us a quick overview of the microphones that we have here on the table. Here we have the Match, mm -hmm. like a really you know, small pencil microphone. Sounds really nice uh, and, you know, we can get them as a matched pair. And that works in a similar process, like mentioned before. So also there, there's a small microcontroller inside. Uh, it can be controlled via XLR during production, so the sensitivity is matched mm -hmm. by adjusting the polarization voltage. And then uh, out of a production lot of, let's say, uh, a thousand units or so, then we also look which kind of frequency responses uh, work best, like, a, <laughs> like somebody said, like a Tinder for microphones. See, you know, what works best together. Right. And 
yeah, they're very like popular, uh, all sorts of acoustic instruments, stereo recordings, overheads. And yeah, they're kind of the smaller brother to, to this one. And they kind of share a lot of the technology. And the difference between them is that we have some more sound shaping features in the LCT-140 Air. So you have one uh, mode here is the air mode, mm -hmm. which we call like, it's very easy and quick to get great sounding results. Or if you want to get the most authentic, more realistic uh, kind of sound, uh, you can switch here to the to the flat uh, response. And then yeah, you have a low cut filter and attenuation. So yeah, those are our, our pencil mics. Right. And, and this is the 440 Pure, right? That's the 440 Pure, correct. Uh, and what's really cool about about that mic, first of all, that's kind of our most popular microphone uh, that we have. And it's kind of neat because it's it's small and it comes as a whole package. You, know, you get the shock mount, the mic, it's a one inch true condenser uh, microphone, also has really high end specs. I think it's 7 dBA self noise, 140 dB max SPL. So really you can record anything with it. And originally the idea was to build kind of a pure studio mic to get that pure studio sound. That's also where the name comes from. Sure, right. Uh, and we were really built for project studios or normal studios and home recording. But now we found that a lot of people uh, you know, outside of that are using these mics for podcasts, for live streamings, and even people just taking like video calls nowadays. Right. Want to look good, you want to sound good. And what also helps is like, it's kind of a camera friendly design. So the pop screen, is, like magnetic, it attaches like this. So it's really small and, and, and yeah, it just gets the job done Brilliant. very quickly and easily. Brilliant. And then the flagship is the uh, the 1040. Yeah, that's a one in a decade project, <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> yeah. it, in fact, it took us actually yeah. seven years. Um, and yeah, I, I vividly remember uh, Moritz and me mm. leaving a NAMM show back in the days. And, and we were thinking, yeah, there's so many flagship mics, but we... We really don't see the innovation there. So we, we started out by asking ourselves, what would the ultimate microphone system be? And yeah, it's not an easy question to answer. So yeah. You actually need to look at the environment where it's being used, which is the professional studio, mm -hmm. and kind of observe a bit where is the friction. Uh, and, and, and we found really it's difficult to have one mic that always fits. And then in a professional studio, it's also very difficult to change out mics and do a mic shooter that's actually not really happening because it interrupts the flow uh, of the session. And then, yeah, that's kind of where it hit us. Right. Let's build the mic that always works, that always fits, that can adapt to any situation. Right. Right. And yeah, we found that kind of tube technology is really helpful because you can get a lot of different characters out of it. It was also important to us to keep the signal path 100% analog. So it's nothing like an emulation or so, like it's all real analog mm -hmm. uh, signal processing. And yeah, I mean, you, the, the cool thing is also you can, you have a big control surface here uh, where you have all these these uh, these settings and well, you can actually detach it You here. can detach it and remote control the microphone, which is just brilliant. It's a fascinating microphone because you, you have the different tube voicings. There's also FET in there. You can blend between tube and FET. You have all the control over it, the remote control. Really a, a fantastic design that offers so many different sonic possibilities. Yes, that, that was actually, there were two main problems to solve. One was what Moritz mentioned, this, this, uh, that it fits to every sound source, right? And that uh, we put a lot of energy and efforts in that. So... We, we circled in on these four char characteristics, clear, warm, dark, and saturated. But then we, we really wanted to verify if we are on the, on the right path. And um, yeah, we did online sound service where really the audio community, 2,500 people, they gave us uh, about 12 minutes of their time uh, running through an, an scientific ABX testing that allowed us to rule out inconsistent uh, results. And it was such a valuable feedback, which we are very grateful for, and helped us to, to steer the project in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So we then implemented this in our development process. And then there was another moment where we said, now we really need to, uh, to uh, give it a reality check. So we started to, to print, 3D print um, several of these uh, products. Um, I think we, we printed how many hours? I think, uh, yeah, I don't uh, know how many hours, but I think hours. it's 20 prototypes. At least, wow. and yeah. it's time-consuming and it's actually very challenging 
because we are not able to 3D print in metal. So, you know, all these little things, it needs to be conductive, right? You, you want to need the shielding, all of that right. stuff. And then we sent them basically around the world <laughs> right. to get feedback. And then we kind of also traveled the world uh, kind of to get the feedback. M many of the ideas actually came from our customers. So, so we have another product, the SAT 940, that already had the feature where you can blend between like a crystal clear FET circuit and a tube circuit. Mm -hmm. And I kind of we expanded on it with these tube voicings. But what people kept doing is they asked us, like, how many cables can I connect together uh, of the 940? So why, why do you need that? Yeah, because I want to make, I want to bring the power supply, which has the controls uh, to me in the sweet spot of my control room. Mm -hmm. And people actually built like connections, like we would have the, the wall uh, thing for your normal XLR mics, they would right. do that for the 940 uh, cable. And I said, okay, well, actually that's not really effective. Let's, because if the analog signals are flowing through, there's a maximum length you can do before it degrades the signal. So here you, we use a standard three pin XLR that you can extend, I don't know, 150, 200 meters. I'm not sure what mm -hmm. that would be, like 600 feet maybe, right. something like this. Uh, and you can control all the settings from the control room. That's awesome. So I'm assuming then with the technology that's in the LCT 1040 that that had to trickle down to some of the other products you're creating. Yes, definitely. Um, so while, while developing flagship products is really interesting, um, especially for our engineers, um, we get to learn a lot of things. We try new stuff, right? And we also then learn a lot. And this is what... Um, allows us to, to put these learnings then into our more affordable microphones as well. So a good example is also our LCD 04D Match. Mm -hmm. We basically benefited from uh, our flagship model developments in learning how to um, calibrate these microphones in an automated fashion in production that keeps the cost low and at the same time match um, uh, captures also in an automated process. And that allowed us actually to provide um, 040 match, which is an outstanding product for two reasons. Um, first of all, for even professional ears, it's not possible to de detect the difference uh, in sound between a, a matched pair. Mm -hmm. That is how good this matching algorithm is. Um, and the other reason is it's it's very affordable. Um, a matched pair, I think, um, goes for 199 US dollar. All right. So that's a really a, a lot of value uh, for that price. That's awesome. Such a fantastic microphone. You definitely have to check this out. And uh, we'll be coming to you with demos of these uh, some of these microphones as well. So look forward to those. But guys, thanks so much for sitting down with us today and, and telling us about the company and giving us an overview of some of the products. It's been, uh, it's been wonderful having you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, I hope yeah. you come back soon. Oh, well, definitely. We hope so too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Be sure to check out the Lewitt microphones. Roman, Moritz, so glad to have you here with us today. Thank you, Mitch. And we're so happy to have Lewitt Audio as part of the Sweetwater family. Thank you. We're really excited to be here. Yeah. Awesome. And thank you for joining us today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Sweetwater.